Hi, and welcome to the Belly to Belly podcast. And today our focus is uh, how to get the most out of glowing, going global 2022. This is sort of, we're gonna talk about preparation and we are very privileged to have Lauren Orlitsky from uh, US Launchpad with us. Good morning and uh, how are you, Lauren? All good, thank you very much. How are you? Fantastic. Well, it's, it's great to have you here. And, you know, uh, I think one of the, the real curious things that companies that are coming to Going Global are interested in, obviously, are finding great resources. And it'd be great to learn more about what U.S. Launchpad does. How do you help U.K. companies that are expanding internationally? Uh, well, I mean, as the name suggests, it's uh, we originally originally set up to help companies launching into the U.S., um, and from that has actually come warehouses opening in the UK and Europe as well. So the name actually doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so that's a work in progress at the moment. But the gist of it is um, I, the store, the backstory is I had um, a health company. I still have a health company, which um, we set up in the UK, uh, e-commerce on the e-commerce side. And um, we wanted to launch in the US knowing that that was a huge market for us. And didn't know where to turn, didn't know where to start. It's it's the classic, where do you start? Nobody knows. Taking that first step is the hardest one because it, whichever direction you start going down, it could be the wrong one or not quite right for your business. So um, it's one of those, if I knew then what I know now, I probably never would have done it, <laughs> but we did. And so I guess US Launchpad came from um, my journey and the, the hell, hellish two years that that was. Um, to help other companies learn from that or learn from the mistakes, learn what not to do. And there are much, much, much easier ways to do it, much cheaper ways to do it. No massive risk, no massive commitment or anything like that. So US Launchpad came about as a bit of a stepping stone for companies to test the market in the US before sending copious amounts of stock or having to open up any kind of warehouse, sign five-year leases, 10-year leases, get staff or anything like that. So use us as a stepping stone will then hand hold you through the whole process from setup to execution to selling and helping you get into retailers if that's the if that's the angle that the, that the client wants to take um, and everything in between so it's there's not a moment where you'll feel lost or thinking mm, not sure where, where I need to take this or what I need to do um, so we're there 100% of the way whether it be video call face to face whatever it may be and just launching the company if they're not already out there or, um, or growing the companies um, to, to get them in, and also sometimes partnering up with other companies and things like that. So it's just, it's making a whole head fuzz of things into a very simple one, two, three, step one, step two, step three sort of guide um, and being there hundred percent of the way. And then if they come to that point with that tipping point where it makes sense for them to actually have their own warehouse and set up themselves, then we'll also so fly the nest. And we'll see that as a massive success story on our part because we've helped grow them to that stage and, and that size and help them do the aftermath of that, setting up all, all of the things that they need to US side um, and Europe as well. We do the same thing in Europe as well. Um, and just bring it all that is one one stop shop, essentially. Now, would you consider yourself a 3PL? Is that a good way to sort of frame the, the sort of overall um, yeah. service? Yeah. So the, the, the core services are, are as a 3PL um, with the pick, pack, storage and things like that. But we offer a lot more on top of that. As I said, the setup, we offer li product liability insurance, which is really, really hard to get in the mm. US for UK companies. A lot of retailers require it as well if you want to sell into, into retailers. So we've got a lot of other things we can help with trademarking um, and, and all the things that come along with with the taxes i won't go into that i'll probably send you to sleep <laughs> um but it is it's a it's it's a minefield um yeah. so we just completely simplify the whole thing do it for the client so there's no there's no sort of worry if they're doing it right if they're working with the right companies right right partners things and it's just simplifying the whole process so yeah 3pl plus more <laughs> yeah <laughs> got it well that's that it's the plus plus yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> So, uh, and, and obviously we're talking about Going Global, which is an event uh, at London or Excel London that's coming up November 16, 17. Um, and it's focused on, on UK companies that are expanding uh, out into whether it's Europe or Asia or the US or somewhere in the Americas. Um, 
And um, so why is it in particular, uh, Lauren, that, that you all are going? What is it that you see about the event that's uh, particularly powerful? Yeah, it's one of those um, one of those things where when, when we got the concept of US Launchpad, we wanted to scream it from the rooftops to everybody. And going global has got such a niche market of everybody aiming for the same goal, essentially, um, and, and launching internationally, which is exactly what we can help with and, and how we can streamline and cut any stupid costs that come with it. So I guess for, I mean, there's, there's, I can't think of many opportunities that you will be in the same room under the same roof as people with a common goal, with companies there that can help you do it and achieve it. And people, individuals there that may have just those, what that one nugget of, of information that could completely transform your journey launching internationally, completely expedite the whole thing. And, uh, you know, if you've got deadlines to me or anything like that, it's, it's just that it's a really unique opportunity to meet people that have all got the same mindset and the same goal actually at the end of it. Um, you can draw experiences, you can learn from other people's mistakes. And also there's a, a probably a hundred million things that you didn't know that you didn't know <laughs> of how to launch internationally. So again, just drawing on that. And I think it's so important with exhibitions as well, where you can actually meet face to face. Sometimes picking up the phone to a company that say they can help, you're not building any kind of rapport and, and you've got that fallback on, if you've met them face to face, you've got that personal connection. And I think that helps hugely in such a huge step for a company, any company, big or small. Mm. Now that, that it, it, it is, it's nice that we're hopefully on the backside of COVID, we can get back together again in person. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that was a kind of the dark ages there for two years. It's sort of, and we measure time. We me everything is described now by COVID. That was oh, that was before COVID. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. It's our our, our, our own new BC. Uh, yeah, new um, BC. <laughs> uh, so so uh, events like this, um, some people it's very natural. They do lots of uh, you know ex expositions and trade shows and all that. Others, it's kind of new. And so we want to make sure our audience gets some good tips and tricks of how to take the most uh, and, and get the most out of um, an event like Going Global. But are there some, you know, thinking about um, maybe younger or maybe uh, companies that are newer going to, to trade shows, um, are there some uh, pieces of advice or wisdom that you would share to help them get the most out of it? Yeah, I would say, I mean, the most important thing is to listen, listen to go to some of the keynote speeches, listen to conversations that are happening around you. Um, if you if you are maybe new and, and it is, um, you know, a startup or something like that, sometimes you might not have the confidence to ask the questions, you may feel too small for for the stand that's there, you know, and you may think, oh, they won't, they won't be interested, but they absolutely will any conversation. I mean, we're there even just to help people not make the mistakes we made, even if they're not a, a potential client or anything like that. Um, so it's just maybe have a little bit of confidence to ask the right questions with the right people, listen to the conversations that are happening on that on those stands around you, um, soak it all up, take notes, 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 because forever and a day I will, if I don't take notes, I will just forget. And I'll be like, no, I definitely will remember that. And then I go away and be like, oh, God, what was said? <laughs> so taking notes is absolutely key for me as well. It, it is. Um, yeah, no, I think those are all really good points. So taking notes makes me actually think of uh, sort of one more question that's been uh, something I've observed. You know, we've been going to lots of events over the last year as, the, you know, as we come out of COVID. And one thing I'm noticing post-COVID is there's a fairly good and it really depends a lot on event and geography you know the specifics there in terms of percentage but it's a much bigger percentage of people today are not carrying business cards um what are your thoughts on this uh obviously there are so many other ways to pass your your, your contact details over to on stands or meeting people and things like that so which is great i think on the sustainable side of things keeping it green we've got zero facility waste um uh, management in in the uk warehouses so that side of things but with business cards i think they are they have a place it's certainly at exhibitions and it's for multiple reasons not just for the ease of you know here's my contact details making notes or whatever um, or remembering your 
tracing your steps back through through the business cards that you've collected but also you can use them as as little um I guess campaigns or something like that on your stand as well. So if you ask a question um, and you want to people to put their business card into the basket or something like that as a question, because they're not necessarily conversation, they don't need to have a conversation, they just want you to follow up. There's little things that you can do with them over and above uh, a scan of a barcode or QR code or whatever it may be. <laughs> so I think they've, they've absolutely got a place um, yeah. if they're on recycled paper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, it's, and obviously, I'm asking that for a specific reason. And that, and and you hit you hit so many great points. You know, the funny thing, if I if I you know we're looking at the hierarchy of things, the funny thing is there's nothing else you can do that people readily accept that gives them your brand, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we we spend all this money on logos and all, all that kind of stuff, but but yet you know, and and I'll, I'll give you a quick quick story. One of the actually, I was in. The UK for an event um, this summer, and uh, the uh, I had people were you know probably fifty percent were not didn't have business cards and were using something else. So the first person that I met that didn't have a business card just say, "Oh, just scan my QR code." I scan their QR code and it goes to their LinkedIn. The next person said, "You know that didn't have a business card." Said, "Oh, scan my QR code." I scan that. And I go to their WhatsApp. Uh, the wow. next person, it goes to their website. The next person, it goes to the app for the uh, for the event. And so the problem, to your point, not only can't you take notes and I mean plan on meeting people, whether it's investors or resources, that, that you're you're completely removing those people's ability to take notes and remember what actions they have for meeting you, and maybe they maybe there's some you know important follow up. Um, but the other is the next day, the only people you can remember are the ones that you have physically. Yeah. Everybody else is uh, is somewhere else, and I, and yeah. and you don't know where. And so, because there's no standard electronic tool, it's it's brutal. I mean, you 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 want to become if you want to be memorable, <laughs> carry business card. Yeah. yeah, I think also they say don't quote me on this, but I think they say is it thirteen times that somebody needs to be exposed to your brand before mm -hmm. they sort of become trusting of that and and take action so yeah. that could go you know one or two times towards the 13 count right. but, and it's and it's tangible it's real where yeah everything else is can, can easily get lost and that the you know the business card not so much but um yeah. anyway well lauren this has been delightful i cannot wait to meet you at uh, at going global it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, i really appreciate you taking a few minutes with us today to talk oh. about U.S. Yeah. Launchpad, maybe soon to be Global Launchpad. We're, yeah. you know, they, I'm just floating it out there. Work in progress. <laughs> I'll, I'll point that field. Thank you. <laughs> Put that on the survey. You know, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> well, this, thanks so much. Thanks, Lauren. It was great to meet you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.